Today, I'm going to show how security teams can automate their mission critical processes, regardless of complexity or technology stack, quickly, securely, and at massive scale using Tynes. This page is called a storyboard. It's where you'll build your automated workflows. In Tynes, everything that you build, regardless of the complexity, the use case, or the technology stack, will be constructed using just these seven building blocks. We call them action types. It doesn't matter if you automate something as simple as this or as complex as this. What this means is that once you know how to configure the seven action types, you'll have all the knowledge you need to automate any process. And that typically takes a few hours. You build workflows by dragging and dropping actions onto the storyboard and connecting them together. Okay, now imagine you have a security tool that generates alerts. It could be from a SIM, EDR, or some kind of cloud monitoring system. The tool generates alerts that require action by your security team. And those alerts require a different type of response depending on the severity. In times, you'd receive these alerts via a webhook action, and they might look something like this. The next thing you'll want to do is make a decision based on the severity of the alert. In times, we make decisions using trigger actions, like this one. You'll notice that the storyboard is completely flexible. This gives me enormous freedom to build a way that makes sense for me. I'll create two more actions. One for medium severity alerts and one for low severity alerts. Now, when an alert is generated, depending on the severity, one of these trigger actions will run. The next thing we'll probably want to do is perform some kind of remediation. One of the most critical features of Tynes is that the platform is truly vendor and stack agnostic. Tynes treats every tool the exact same way. It doesn't matter who built it, what it does, or where it's hosted. Tynes works in a consistent way out of the box. So let's say that in the event of a low priority alert, I want to send a Slack notification. All I would have to do is drag in a HTTP request action and configure it. Alternatively, if I didn't want to build a request from scratch, I could use one of several thousand action templates. I'd just search Slack and find the action that meets my needs. Now that we have the basic concepts, let's look at something a little more realistic. Here we have a phishing response story. This is a pretty common example of a story implemented by Times users. We're reading suspicious emails, extracting indicators, analyzing indicators in multiple threat intelligence sources, creating tickets, performing pivot searches, fetching additional user information, and even quarantining devices. Let's look under the hood and see what happens when this story runs. Time stories can run in multiple different ways. Here, I'm just going to press run on the first action. Immediately, we'll see these actions begin to emit events. And we can view these events by clicking on the Events tab. Remember, an event is the result of an action running. In this case, the IMAP action is configured to find all new emails. And so the event predictably contains the email details. We have the sender, header, body, and all kinds of other valuable info. And this is the event that will be sent to the next action in the story, extract URLs. When extract URLs receives this event, it immediately runs, does its job, and emits a new event. When we look at that event, we'll see a couple of interesting things. Firstly, Sure enough, this action has done its job. It's found all the URLs in the body of the email. In addition, the event that was emitted also contains the email details. And this is really important, so I'll pause on it for just one second. In times, all seven actions work the exact same way. When they run, the event that they emit contains the result of their action 
and the result of every action up to that point in the story. That may not seem too impressive here because it's just two actions. But if we go further down the story to say, get DHCP search results, we'll see that in a short space of time, Tynes has collected a huge amount of valuable context. So essentially, the more actions you have, the more situational awareness you can collect. And ultimately, the more accurate your decision making and response becomes. Last thing I'll show is how easy it is to modify a story. Let's say I'm a frontline security analyst and I'm responsible for this workflow. I don't know how to write code, but I know this process inside out. And I know that after I determine that an email is malicious, I need to send an email to the reporter thanking them. Again, to use times, you do not need to be a developer. All you need to know is which action to use. And you can probably guess that to send emails, I need to use the email action. I'm going to drag an email action onto the storyboard and drop it somewhere around the URL is malicious. Then I need to configure the action. I'll call it contact victim. For the subject, I'll say thank you for the email. For the body, I'll say don't click the link. All that's left is the recipient. But the recipient is going to be different for every email that's analyzed, and I won't know who it is in advance. However, what I do know is that this action I just created will receive events from here. And those events look like this. So this is all the information that the story has collected up to this point. I've got the virus total results in full, I've got the URLs that were extracted, and I've got the email information. And I can see the sender. So all I do is go back to my new email action, delete this placeholder, and press equals. Then I can choose the information I want to use. In my case, check inbox. And there you have it. In those few minutes, you saw how anyone, regardless of their technical background, can automate their own manual workloads quickly, easily, and at scale using Tynes. Thank you.